Really quick before we get into the video, I started my own Rust server, Dust Bowl 1.5x Vanilla. It's a small map 1.5x Gather 8 Vanilla server with a couple of quality of life improvements. Stop by the Discord today to get notifications for the next wipe, and who knows, maybe we'll run into each other. Welcome back to another base build video, you guys. Today we're looking at the Micro Yeti, the ultimate base for those duos and trios that absolutely dominate the server. This base features an incredibly defendable mini China wall, seemingly infinite respawn points, and low commitment to an area, but with the ability to expand to a full main base when needed. This base also features a brand new method I came up with to build four wide gap shooting floors without any wide gap buildouts, so it's incredibly fast to build in a real wipe. And I vetted this base with Coma, Disfigure, and Spicy. Make sure you go check out their channels to see the video from that wipe. The build cost and upkeep shown on the screen accounts for absolutely every deployable that you can place. The mini china wall makes up about half of your stone cost, but it's definitely worth it since it gives you a massive number of defensive angles at respawn points. Our footprint is made up of our main base, four wide gap shooting floors, and two china walls. Overall, this base only has two external TCs and a main TC. It also doesn't require you to do any wide gap buildouts. Jumping right into the base tour, you can see we have a mini Satori and Mr. Man style disconnectable TC on either side of the base. And this is what the upkeep of each of those looks like. To disconnect our TC, we can place a twig foundation and twig roof right here. And to reconnect them, we'll just replace that floor frame. Coming to one of our two main entrances, you can see we form an airlock here with these triangle roofs that actually prevent people from laddering over. We also have peaks from the mini china wall into the airlock on either side. Jumping up these raised foundations and roof tiles, they also act as mobility up on top of your gate to give you some additional angles outside the compound. We can see each of the wide gap shooting floors uses these frames right here to reconnect to the china wall. Coming into this bedroom, we can see just a locker and two beds, as well as a jump up into that peak that we just looked at. Jumping up on top of the mini china wall, we can see we have low walls for cover, a couple of breach peaks here and here, and then a symmetrical airlock on the other side. We can jump down into this bedroom, which has a couple of respawn points, as well as a few boxes. These are optional, but I would recommend the ones behind these roofs. This locker is actually unlootable if you code lock it. My good friend Walker V2 showed me this, and he helped me design this china wall. So huge shout out to him. We can also see these breach peaks, so if somebody pumbles the side of your base, you have a great angle in to surprise them with. We can fit a large furnace right in the middle here, and then we have two more symmetrical bedrooms on the other side. Now that we've taken a look at the china wall, let's look at the main base. Coming in our standard airlock, you can see that this is actually just a 2x1 with honeycomb. We have 10 large boxes of storage, 3 furnaces, and a place for your workbench. Coming over to the far right, you can see we have a very secure main TC, and here's its upkeep. Going up the mobility chute, this looks a lot like the mini Yeti's loot rooms. We also have two turrets and some jump up peaks. Third floor looks the same as second floor, except I've armored the loot rooms. I would put a lot of my main loot here. Coming up to fourth floor, we have four beds, a couple of lockers, some very secure batteries, and this awesome little tucked away vending machine spot. We can come out to our shooting floor where we have four additional respawns and a couple of lockers. These wide gaps give us great angles throughout our entire compound. We also have these drop down breach peaks which will let you see inside of the base if it's been pummeled. Jumping up here we have some peaks onto the roof as well as additional respawn points and lockers.
On the roof, we have a windmill for our turrets, a couple of turrets in these pods, and then some awesome vending machine bunkers. These are super overpowered, and all it takes is a piece of twig right here to open it up. You can use these to store important loot like your explosives overnight, and you can use them as drone shops simultaneously. And that's about it for the Micro Yeti. Let's get into the build. We'll start off by placing three triangle foundations facing the direction that you want one of your external TCs going. While in this footprint, put a ceiling on it and a double door frame here. Line your TC up with the line on the ground and put a code lock on it. This will ensure that you can upgrade every side of the TC compartment. After doing this, we can put a reinforced glass window on here to ensure that we have four rockets of protection. We can come outside and build a standard honeycomb 2x1 footprint off of these three triangles. Coming to this triangle, we can put a single door frame and wall in the rest of the footprint. When we get to this triangle, we'll wall in the entire thing because this will be our jump up. Then we'll slap a ceiling on the entire thing. When we get to the jump up, place some full walls and then a half height shelf along with a double door frame. Just make sure when you do this you don't seal the very top of it because it will be the jump up to third floor as well. At this point we can put down a few sleeping bags in the square that won't interfere with any double door frames. We can then use this square as a full loot room by just putting a half height shelf here. We'll put three small furnaces in this triangle and then a workbench next to it. Feel free to do a tier 1 and then upgrade it to a tier 2 when you have the resources. Use any loot room design you want on the square loot room. I'm just doing six large boxes because it's what I prefer. Also before you place these front boxes, make sure you have a garage door or a double door on. Coming into our original three triangle starter, we can place a half height shelf here and fit another four boxes. Just make sure you place this double door frame first and get either a garage door or a double door on. At this point we have all of the deployables we need so let's build the jump up. We can also place down double door frames on all of these sockets and a window frame over our furnaces. To finish up our starter unit, we'll come to our front entrance and add a simple single door airlock onto it. And just like that, we've got our starter unit down. Now nobody can go deep. We'll start off our second floor expansion by mirroring the airlock we have here with standard honeycomb. Once we have this symmetrical shape, we can go ahead and start making our door peaks. Place four walls like this with a half height shelf right here, and then a single door frame on it. We'll seal the top of that with a regular triangle ceiling. We'll do the same on the other side of the double door as well. Now that those are complete, we can wall in the rest of this footprint and put a ceiling on it. We can put single doors in here for now since they're exposed to the outside of the base and these give you great angles to defend a minicopter from. We'll replace this double door with a garage door and then move the double door up another jump up. Create another jump up here with a double door on it and remember don't seal the top of this. These are how our roof peaks look from the top and now it's time to furnish the inside of the second floor. Coming back to the second floor, we'll start off by just walling our loot rooms in. This will be exactly the same as the mini Yeti. We'll put half height shelves all the way across this and then spam double door frames down so we can get garage doors on all of these sockets. At this point, it's totally up to you how you want to lay these loot rooms out. Again, I'm just going to use a six box loot room in the middle because it's what works best for me. And then we'll put a four box loot room on either side of it.
Eventually turrets will go in both of these spots. I don't really expect you to have it now, but if you have a generator, it might make a good spot in an online raid defense. From this point on, I'll be using the final grade in the rest of the video. I've gone ahead and upgraded the starter unit, as you can see. Most things are sheet metal, except for windows, double door frames, and single door frames. The three triangle section where the TC is, I've also armored. Things like shelves, jump ups, and door frames only need to be stone. And just remember, upgrade things as much as you can. Usually by the end of wipe, my bases are entirely sheet metal with zero stone upkeep. The first thing we'll do to get our external TCs down is get honeycomb on this side of the base so it mirrors the other side. Now that we've done that, we have a symmetrical shape to work with. Coming to each of these sides, we'll do a square and then two raised triangles to act as our breach peaks. We can come off of these raised foundations with a square and a triangle and then build out four squares from there. At the end, we'll place a stone triangle and put an external TC in it. These ones won't overlap building privilege, they just prevent people from building right outside of your main gate. After we've secured that and put upkeep in it, we can delete the twig. We'll make sure to mirror the exact same steps on the other side as well. Make sure you practice this next section on a build server before trying this in a real wipe. I've come up with a new freehanding method that allows you to build four directional shooting floors off of a single freehand without any build out. It's super cool, a massive time saver, but it does take a little bit of practice. Place a twig triangle on either side of the base and leave a twig for now. I'll be using symmetry so it's mirrored on both sides. Place a low wall on each side of this and leave those twig as well. Then line your cursor up right on the middle. If we zoom in here, you can see that there's a dark spot on the left and a light spot just to the right of that. We'll want our cursor exactly on the middle, level with that white spot. You'll know it's on the middle when you flip back and forth one pixel at a time from left to right. Delete both pieces of twig without moving your mouse and then scoot forward until you're halfway through the circle. I have my FOV turned all the way up in the settings and that will affect how this looks. Place a square on the end as well as two triangles, a square, and then your final triangle. Upgrade that to sheet metal and you can get rid of the rest of the twig. We can upgrade this one to sheet metal as well and then begin the build out for our external TC. We'll do a square triangle, two squares, and then our external TC design. And just like that, we have all of our build outs done. I'm going to place two sheet metal walls here a sheet metal wall here, and then two half walls here. The half walls are super important for the disconnectable method. We can place our TC in here and enclose the rest of this external. To make this a 7 rocket raid, we'll use a sheet metal door on the front as well as two windows. Now we'll just follow the pattern that we have in twig on the ground here and reconnect these with frames. Make sure to test and see if your disconnectable method is working by placing a twig foundation here and placing a roof. If it breaks, that means everything's working right. We'll reconnect this with sheet metal and we're good to go. Make sure you do the same thing on the other side, so just rewind the video and refollow the same steps. To finish up our honeycomb, we will come to the two exposed triangles on either side of the base and honeycomb them. Once both of those are done, we can see the final footprint of the main base. We can wall in the entire floor.
On the inside, I'm using HQM here. This has been factored into the build cost, however, it's not necessary. It just gives you additional pummel protection from the side. We'll build our loot rooms just like the floor below, except in the middle one, we won't put a full square across it. I'm putting double door frames down, and we'll spam garage doors just like the other floor. We can place our tier 3 workbench right here, with a small box under it, a couple large boxes next to it, and then a couple more small boxes. After this, we can place a triangle above everything and then place two more large boxes on top of it. Again, we can put turrets here whenever we get them. We can get rid of this double door and replace it with a garage door and then just like the other floors build a jump up above it. However, this time we actually seal the top of it. We can then seal the tops of all of the honeycomb and our third floor is complete. We'll start our mini china wall by building off of our external with this pattern. We'll do this a total of four times, twice on each side of the base. After you've got this shape, we'll build the wide gap shooting floors off of the china wall. We'll use double door frames to reconnect the shooting floor to the china wall. We have a total of four shooting floors that reconnect to two china walls. Once you've got this done, replicate the same thing on the other side of the base off of the other external TC. Now that we have the footprint down for the china wall, we can start putting some walls up. We'll start over here where the gates go, and then we'll place a gate in the middle. This has to be done before the airlock is put on the inside. Come to this section and use three full walls here, followed by three half walls next to it. We can then put window frames facing outward on all of these. Repeat that again three more times on the other sides of the base. Now we can put a ceiling on the entire china wall. And just like that we have all of the external walls up. At this point, we'll go into both the gates and make the airlock. Make sure to put window bars or window embrasures on these so people can't just crawl right through. We can start off with this bedroom by doing a half wall low wall combo followed by a window and a couple of double door frames. Use a floor frame right here, and then put a ceiling on it. We'll use a furnace here as a jump up, and then we can place a couple of beds and windows in here. Make sure to get your doors on, and then place this small box here for better mobility. These low walls are optional, but give you a lot of cover if you're standing on top of the china wall. Coming over to the second bedroom, we'll put two window frames and a double door frame. Put a ceiling on this and then some low walls to use as peaks. 
put window embrasures on two of the windows and then in the middle put a glass window. We don't want to put our roof tiles down just yet because we need to put a locker behind it. Press it against the wall and then pull it off the wall just a little bit. If it sticks through like this, that means you've done it right. Place a code lock on it and make sure your teammates get it before you seal this off. This is a super space effective way to get a locker into this bedroom and have a really functional peak that looks back at your base. We can put some windows down and then slap two beds here very easily. And that's how you build both of the bedrooms in the mini china wall. This middle section can just get some ceiling tiles and then some low walls. Then we'll rinse and repeat what we just did on the other side. While I'm building, I just wanted to give a shout out to anybody who's still watching the video. Make sure you drop a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. We've been growing like crazy and I really appreciate you guys sticking with me. Also, make sure you go stop by the Discord. We're over 3,000 members strong. And give me a follow on Twitter. I frequently leak bases early on Builder Sanctuary and then post them in my Discord and Twitter so you guys can take a look before the videos are out. There also seems to be a fair bit of interest in me starting streaming on Twitch so we can do community base reviews and everything that you guys submit we can take a look at on stream so again make sure you're in my discord to get notifications if that ends up happening and you never know maybe your base will make it on stream Just like that, we've got all of our bedrooms down and we can put these final low walls and ceiling tiles in. You can see both sides of the china wall connect perfectly, so you have mobility across. We can finish this up by putting all of the remaining window embrasures on. You can see we use a glass window here so then the locker can't just be picked out from the outside. The last part of the china wall is to get all the barricades on top. Just remember you can craft blades and they're actually pretty cheap mid to late game. We'll need to use twig to place down most of these barricades and then just destroy the twig after. And just like that, we've completed the mini china wall, which means we're almost done with the base. Again, I want to give a huge shout out to Walker V2 for iterating on this china wall design with me. Next, we can come to our roof and start to get our bedrooms down. If we come to the triangle opposite of our doorway, we can put a single door frame with a vending machine inside of it. This is honestly a really secure place to put loot that most raiders will never find. We'll then put two walls here and a single door frame and mirror it on the other side. We can HQM the middle walls here because that's where our battery compartment will be. We'll put a sheet metal ceiling on the entire thing and then put the walls where our batteries go. Just like the other floors, we'll spam double door frames here with garage doors in them. Go ahead and slap down as many beds as you need. You can fit up to four in this area really easily, but if you're a trio, then three works just fine. We can fit a couple lockers here as well. And that's it for our bedroom floor. One of the last things we have to do is finish up our shooting floor. We'll build a square off of each one of the edges of the wide gaps that we already built previously, and then we can start building up with three frames on each one of them.
When you're done, it should look just like this, and make sure you do it on both sides of the base. We can then come to the breach peak area and build up two frames from here. In sheet metal, we can place our floors for the wide gaps. Just make sure all of the floors are placed off of the wide gap frames and not off of the base. Then in the breach peaks, we can place low walls and four window frames. We'll jump up here and use a single door frame and a double door frame. Place a couple of roofs and ceiling tiles up here and our breach peaks are done. On the square parts of the shooting floor, do half walls with windows on top of them, and then windows on the rest of them. Before we put a ceiling on, we can easily place these roof tiles from here. Then hop up onto the top of the roof to finish it up. We can place these last roof tiles by hopping up on these ones. Right in the middle goes our windmill tower if we just have one windmill, otherwise we can fit a couple here if we place them in the corners. If you place a windmill right on the middle, you actually don't need these triangles to remain there either. I like to put an auto turret in each one of these pods to cover the roof. We'll then put a garage door here and we can leave the single door empty. Put a couple extra beds in the shooting floor and then we can put some double door frames here with some garage doors. This will separate our shooting floor off a little bit, add a little bit more honeycombing to the battery compartment and allow us to put a locker in here that's protected. The last thing we have to do on the roof is create our vending machine bunkers. We'll start off by placing some twig here and then centering a vending machine and pushing it all the way to the back. We should be able to place a wall right here and flip it back towards us and then upgrade it to HQM. At this point to open up your bunker all you have to do is place a twig roof here. Demolish it and the loot is inaccessible for raiders. Before we wrap up the video, there are just a couple small things left to look at. If we come inside of the compound, you can see over here is where you'll place your large furnaces. Unfortunately, you can only fit one on either side, but based on the metal cost of the space, it shouldn't be too much of an issue. They also act as mobility up onto your china wall, which is a nice feature. Lastly, if this gate gets blown up during a raid, you actually can't replace it because of the foundations behind it. So if I try this, it shows up as red until I remove these. One solution is to add a square off of each of these to seal it quickly. If you're in the middle of a raid and need to get something up ASAP, this is a good solution. The other solution is just to leave these always in wood so then they're either easy to destroy or get destroyed in a raid. That way they're replaceable, even though those airlock walls still remain there. The unfortunate side effect of this is that you actually can't replace those foundations, meaning that you can't replace the roof tiles either. It's not the end of the world though, the airlock is a nice to have more than a necessity. Also, if you're kind of a perfectionist like me, you can actually seal these up so then you don't see the ugly side of the walls. If you made it this far in the video, I really appreciate you watching. Please drop a like and a sub, and as always, have a great wipe.